uh, we had uh, eighth round of uh, mass drug administration for elimination of uh, filariasis. Uh, whenever we approach people, you know, they will used to ask us, so what is the treatment for the people who are suffering from filariasis? Filariasis means, you know, it is uh, a thero or uh, where the limbs are swollen, uh, people who are having hydrocele and all. For hydrocele, there is a surgical correction. But then when the limbs are swollen, we were not able to answer their question. And though many people they wanted to avail the services through directorate of health services and uh, we were really in a fix so we advise them only to take care of their feet clean wash have a dressing uh, uh, at a regular period and our people were visiting them uh, but when we interacted with dr shantibhushan gojia you know he is from uh, aims uh, he is a general surgeon and plastic surgeon he has done tremendous work in filariasis and uh, he told us that we can do uh, many more things for these people, you know, including physiotherapy, surgical correction and taking care of the foot. So the idea came that we must set uh, foot clinics for these patients also. As uh, everybody is aware, we have the diabetic foot care clinics. We have work for the leprosy patients also and we are taking care, we are doing the surgical correction and we are giving the footwear also. So we want to uh, give the similar care to these patients. Uh, right now we are having 148 patients, uh, but I believe there are many more and if they are, uh, you know, if they come to know that uh, we can give them some services, then uh, this list will go up. Uh, initially, we will be starting these clinics at the district hospitals and GMC and uh, depending on the uh, experience of this, we would like to expand it further to our CSCs and PSCs. But again, this needs, uh, you know, training of our staff and we are talking to Dr. Gozia regarding this and uh, we will be sending our staff for the training also. Now here I have with us the expert, the Dr. Gozia. He is a surgeon, very well known surgeon from Delhi. He has a vast experience in management of lymphedema cases, their elephantiasis. We have plastic surgeon, Dr. Yuri. We have Dr. Amankar, he is the head of department of surgery, medical college. We have here the physiotherapist and my colleague here, uh, Dr. Palekar. Since 2004, we are heading for elimination of filariasis. Two important strategies for this elimination. One is mass drug administration to prevent the transmission by giving diethyl carbamazine citrate tablet that is called DEC and albendazole. Another very important strategy, those are already suffering from this lymphedema, you know it call, we call it elephantiasis and for that we do the morbidity management. We have now gone on a national wide scale of trying to control lymphedema and this thing, another problem with the filariasis as you all know is hydrocele which can be treated by any surgery which most surgeons do. But lymphedema care is not complicated, but knowledge of it that it is treatable is a little lacking and that's what we are trying to cover. You can be rest assured that any of your patients, or friends or relatives who have got this problem should be told that this can be easily managed mostly at home. We consider lymphedema no better or no worse than diabetes. Everybody gets treatment for diabetes. but Lymphedema unfortunately has been neglected not only by the patients but also by the doctors. We hope to change that and thanks to the Goa government, Goa is going to be the first state which is not only going to be free of, lymph of filariasis but also free of the effects of, lymph of filariasis. Lymphedema occurs because there is excessive generation of fluid or there is a damning effect around the nodes by removal or because of infection or blockage. It is basically fluid which has increased. And this is how it works that everybody has got circulation, circulation takes place through the blood, 90% of that fluid goes back into the blood after the tissue exchange, 10% remains by behind which comes through lymphatics. And in a person with lymphedema, the lymphatics are deranged. Normally lymphatics have got valves in them only at the lower most portion, at the upper portion there are no valves. But there is a process of muscular movement which causes the compression and helps pump up the fluid to come back to the body. So, a fluid from the, from the toe has to come up right 
across certain joints into the neck to go back to the circulation system. And these are the various types of lymphedema that occur. When, when this occurs, the, this fluid is a very good culture medium. And this culture medium makes it very good, very well prone to infection. Any cause of fluid accumulation, anywhere in the body, if you have fluid accumulation in the bladder and the urine obstruction is there, you get urinary infection. Is this fluid accumulation in the gallbladder which is staying for a long time, you get uh, cholecystitis. Similarly, if you have fluid accumulation in the limb, it tends to get infection. And the only problem that occurs is the filaria as a worm resides in the lymphatics and it allows, it destroys the lymph, dilates the lymphatics so that instead of fluid going up, the fluid falls down. The lymphatics are dilated. The valves get deranged because of the pull of the of the uh, of the wall itself. Because the valve is this big. When you pull up, there is a loss of the valve. So the fluid tends to fall down. As long as the filaria worm is there, it tries to make sure that the lymphatic is intact because it has to survive inside that environment itself. But so at this stage, you get some fluid accumulation. This is called reversible edema. If the filaria dies or you lift up the leg that the edema will disappear. But what happens later, because this fluid is prone to infection or you get edema due to any other cause, you can get it to paralysis, you can get it to cardiac disease, this catches infection and once infection occurs, you will get blockage of the lymphatics, actual physical blockage, which will create a vicious cycle because the blockage is going to cause more fluid to accumulate. Right? So basically there is you can say there is excessive rain initially, but the damming effect occurs because of the blockage which occurs secondary to infection. So it's a vicious cycle. Once you get you get more accumulation, more chances of infection, more blockage, more chances of infection. Like that it goes on. And with each infective attack, you get some fibrosis, you get hardening of the skin, and you go into elephantiasis. But this infection generally is sensitive to penicillin. That's the interesting part. So you can understand what is the treatment, prevent infection, give penicillin, that is the treatment for filariasis. There are of course more specific details but if you understand that concept, you know how to treat lymphedema. I will just come in little detail about the certain uh, things about uh, this thing, filariasis as I said, resides in the lymphatics, it is a global disease. So there is another condition known as venous edema where now it is excessive rain. The venous backflow is what is causing more initial generation. But again, finally, because of infection, that also becomes proper lymphedema. There is another condition known as lipedema, which looks like lymphedema. This you should be able to distinguish because in lipedema, there is very little fluid. But in lipedema, as you can see, there is proximal swelling which looks like fat. It is not smooth. Here you can see the smooth swelling. And this is called stemmer's test in which we try to pinch up the, the skin between the toes of, of webs. If you can pinch it up, that means it is not lymphedema. The most common which is used in the West is CDT or comprehensive decongestive therapy. So this is the main method in which it is given. The body is divided into, the trunk part is divided into four parts. So this is one, quarter one, this is quarter two, three, four. Upper, lower limb, right side, left side. And what happens is each of them have their own lymphatic drainage mechanism. So Anything below the umbilicus on the right side, the, all the lymph will flow to the inguinal nodes. Similarly, out here above the umbilicus and the arm, including the breast, will flow to the axillary nodes of that side. Right? Similarly for that. But we know that the lymphatics are affected in the area where the, the limb is this thing. So we know because the nodes are affected and they cannot be used for reabsorption of the, of the limb, we try to just make sure that the limb the lymph flows manually from one part of that body to the other part. So, and before we do that, we have to ensure that that part is ready to co collect the limb. Because it's like just like damming. If you have a blockage in the head and you try pushing fluid, you just get a further flooding in that area. So, what we do is, there is flooding in this corner, there is no flooding in that corner. We will push the fluid to that side, but before we do that, we make sure that side is empty. Normally, first thing we do is because most of the, well, the lymph enters the body through the neck. So, first thing we do is rub the neck like this. 
so we are trying to empty this area out first then we come to the the part which is next to the affected part so we'll suppose the edema is on on this side we will try to empty this side first and then across these center points and the umbilical are called the watershed areas we will try to push the limb from here to the other side and then we will again try to empty it again then we will start in three parts start from the uppermost part push it up take it across to the other side start from a little lower push it up take it across to the other side right and we can use that normally we use an l shape so when we are this is affected we will try to bring it here as well as here just summarizing in the end is that patient load of around 40 million worldwide with 20 million in india patients are nobody favorites they disfigured discharged smelling wounds unable to work not useful to society and depressed this is the fourth highest cause of morbidity probably the highest in india unfortunately the disability is rated at less than 20% so they don't get any benefit of the of the disability not even a free railway ticket nor a cheaper railway ticket but it is a problem this on the results again so this is the level of uh, service that you want to provide level 1 is the, is the highest one is which they require complex care level 2 is disease specific care which can be done by paramedics and level 3 self care and management is 70 to 80% of patients so lymphedema is not uh, different from diabetes treatment is possible but lifelong major effects can be managed including long term disability disability and emotional problems